Distinguished professors and colleagues, good afternoon. I'm Zheng Bo from Peking University First Hospital. Today, I'd like to talk about active site branch protection strategy in coronary bifurcation lesion treatment. And I have no conflict of interest to disclose. According to the current guideline, provisional site branch setting strategy is a first line recommendation for most of coronary bifurcation lesion. One stand strategy could avoid complex procedure, long procedure time, multiple metallic drugs accumulation at the site of application. However, the provisional strategy might face some challenges, especially when the bifurcation anatomy is a little bit complex. Several potential mechanisms could lead to increased risk of cell branch compromise, such as plaque shift, thrombosis, dissection, and extended hematoma. Therefore, the prediction of cell branch occlusion is getting more and more crucial. In 2015, Professor Do Kofei presented an interesting investigation to build up an QCA-based angiographic tool for risk prediction of cell branch occlusion in coronary bifurcation intervention. And in 2016, the same investigation group present a simplified version V-resolve score with visual estimation and full parameters, pre-procedural diameter stenosis of the bifurcation core, bifurcation angle, diameter ratio between main vessel and set branch, and diameter stenosis of the set branch before main vessel stenting. The V resolve score greater than or equal to 12 points represent high risk of set branch occlusion. However, the concern is raised that in this study, the majority of the side branch occluded did not have a protection wire placed at the baseline. And a simple wire placement could help to restore normal flow and avoid side branch occlusion. And this concept is further validated by recent published data from a career in 1006 890 patients with bifurcation lesion who underwent the uh, one stand strategy were uh, classified into two groups according to the use of side branch wild jailing. And after multivariable regression analysis, wild jailing is a protective factor of the side branch compromise, especially in main vessel stenosis greater than 60% before stenting. However, if we look at the absolute number, even we perform while jailing, the incidence of the cell branch occlusion is still high when main vessel is relatively severe diseased. Therefore, uh, we should figure out some other effective approaches to protect cell branch when the anatomy of bifurcation lesion is more complex. So far, we have some several options to do active cell branch protection, uh, including jailed bloom technique and bloom stand kissing technique, jailed microcaster technique, and even two stand strategy. And in CIT Resolve uh, trial, the investigators tried to compare the active cell branch protection versus conventional approach in reducing cell branch occlusion in high risk bifurcation treatment, defined as V resolve score greater than or equal to 12 points. And the active side branch protection included elective to stand strategy for large side branches and jailed bloom technique for small side branch. And the eventual approach was um, provisional standing for large stand, uh, side branch and jailed wire technique for small side branch. Finally, and the patient in the active side branch protection group have a significant lower rate of side branch occlusion. And to further comprehensive investigate the difference between active and conventional set branch uh, protection strategy for uh, coronary bifurcation lesion, we conducted a meta analysis and 1,174 patients from four retinal control clinical trial and one observational study were included. And the majority of the patients have two bifurcation lesion, and the active protection strategy included jailed bloom, BSKT, jailed cool cell technique, as well as elective two stand strategy. And the control group was jailed wire technique. And the endpoint is 
included cell branch occlusion, a decrease in TMI flow grade in cell branch, absence of blood flow in cell branch, uh, procedural myocardial infarction, and the long-term maze. And the cell branch occlusion was defined as any decrease in the TMI flow grade immediate after the main vessel stand implantation. And after analysis, we can see active cell branch protection could decrease the risk of cell branch occlusion, but not absence of the TMI flow and the side branch. And for procedural myocardial infarction and long-term maze, the difference between the two groups was not significant. And although the current meta-analysis have several limitations, and there is still indication that acting side branch uh, protection approach may help to reduce the side branch uh, compromise in bifurcation lethal treatment. And the active cell branch protection provides more chances to restore flow when cell branch occlusion occur after main vessel standing, especially by a jade undersized balloon and with appropriate inflation pressure when necessary. It could help to facilitate rewiring uh, the set branch to perform further provisional procedure. However, when we do active cell branch protection, we should be cautious when jail device trapped in severely angled and calcified bifurcation region and increase the risk of main vessel stand deformation and other um, acute complications. And routine active cell branch protection could be time consuming and increase the medical cost. And it might only be applied for patients with high risk bifurcation region. And in summary, Cell branch protection strategy depends on carefully uh, pre-assessment for uh, before PCI. Complex bifurcation with high risk of cell branch occlusion needs more active cell branch protection. And further investigations are needed to validate the value of active cell branch protection in large-scale clinical trials. Thank you for your attention.